The Metaphysician's Desk Reference on the Enochian Communication System. D. The Akashic Records. The Akashic Records are a relatively recently revived concept deriving originally from the ancient Far East. Edgar Cayce, the 20th century psychic, said that he derived his ability to read people's past lives from the Akashic Records. According to Casey, he had learned of the Akashic Records in the same way Madame Blavatsky, the 19th and early 20th century theosophist, had on journeys made to the Orient and the East, and particularly from Tantric, Yogic, Sanskrit documents. Besides these two, there is no writing on the Akashic Records known to Western society, and there are no translation of the Sanskrit documents they claim to have read into English or any other language. The documents themselves have allegedly been lost. Madame Blavatsky was considered a dubious character in her time, as was Edgar Cayce in his, and it is possible that the documents both were referring to were actually nothing more than the works of 19th century Russian novelist J.I. Jurjeev. However, even these contain no mention of the Akashic records per se, and so one is left to wonder how these two independent authorities came to discover the same descriptive terminology for a concept that no one else seemed to share. It may be better to begin the history of this concept a little further back, with Ezekiel's vision of the Ophanim wheels, or even the Old Testament Apocrypha of Enoch, preserved to this day by the Jews of Ethiopia. These are accounts of visions of the heavens, and in particular of the mechanisms of their cycles. They differ from the Sumerian books of Enki, in that they are more calendrical in nature, establishing patterns and cycles for the seasons. With the accounts of these perceptions begins the true recording of the history of the Akashic records, which were, at the time, only known as the cycles of the heavens. The Egyptians, and later the Christians, would have large-scale descriptions of the components of the heavens and their cycles in great detail. However, both of these calendars were as though frozen in time, the Egyptians set by the alignments of their megaliths to 12,500 years ago, the Christian Gregorian calendar pivoting around the year zero some 2,000 years ago. Meanwhile, all the faiths the world over have always promoted the idea of an afterlife, and we believe this belief to date back as far as ritualized burial practiced even by the Australopithecines, the first hominids. Thus, the temporal cycles of the extraterrestrial heavens have become associated by most faiths with the heavens of man, where the spirit goes after the physical body dies. Thus, this could be called the Akashic Records, the sum over histories that is the multiverse of all matter energy of the universe over its entire duration, measured as dimensions by the vector of geometry. It amounts to the exact location of any point in history, and insofar as these can be linked together, was the basis for Casey's past life readings. It can therefore be subdivided into constituent sections from the universal singularity, through the gravitational singularities, through the galactic bubbles, through all the stars of the galaxies, through any planets of any star, and so on and so on, through into the categorizing of information units themselves, right down to the smallest tachyon. Doing so creates a perception of the temporal pattern of the heavens such as described by Enoch. E. The Enochian System There are two origins of the Enochian System. One is the calendrical cycle described by the Ethiopian Hebrew prophet Enoch. The other is the system of the heirs described by the 14th century Elizabethan England scryers John Dee and Edward Kelly. The cycle described by Enoch is simple enough. It establishes many of the same calendrical features still in use today, such as the 12 months of the year, with both name, sign, and deacon, and the four seasons. One feature of the Dee and Kelly system is in complete agreement with the elder system in these regards, 
giving angelic banners to the months and assigning godly names as angelic deacons to each. Beyond this, the Dee and Kelly scryings provide even greater insights into the temporal workings of our heavens, incorporating extrapolations of the four elemental forces as the four cardinal directional watchtowers at the corners of the universe. The D and Kelly model unwinds the Shemham Farash of the 72 deacons of 10 days and 10 nights each, three per each of the 12 signs of the zodiac, including three positions for each determined by astrological alignments over an elemental grid. It is a very complex system, giving the names of a host of angels as the arcing intersections of letters within, placed upon the grid of this cycle, and assigning them into the multiple levels of spheres of the thirty airs. While neither the names of the months and signs given by Enoch, nor the importance of the letters scribed by D. and Kelly, seems to have held up, the systems with which they measured are still out there today, and can still be used to understand the cycles of the heavens and the place of our moment in this universe. Think of the Akashic Records as the contraction of the same medium as the Enochian system is the expansion. While the Akashic Records provide information from without, the Enochian system derives information from within. Both are merely movement on the geometry of the Kabbalah, which is phi over pi. Therefore, the Akashic Records and the Enochian system represent all the same things, the universal singularity, the gravitational singularities, the galactic bubbles, the coiling electromagnetic fields of stars, and so on and so on, down to the sorting of information itself, down to the smallest tachyon. Think of the Akashic Records as what is being accessed, and the Enochian system that is used to access them. 1. The Satellite Telecommunications System Whatever demiurge or guiding principle there may be in the universe, the satellite telecommunication system is made by and for humanity. Like Stonehenge, it will stand as testimony to the greatness of the human mind. Its usage, on the other hand, seems to be unanimously agreed upon as contributing more often to human stupidity. This is through no fault of its own, for every ingenious component of these beautiful scientific marvels functions accurately to perform their goal. It is only because of politics between the people and the surface of the earth that these are used in the ways that they are. One type of satellite is the military satellite. These observe and have very strong camera lenses capable of reading license plates on cars. Some of these are the leftover Star Wars satellites from the 1980s that have laser guidance targeting systems for destroying intercontinental ballistic missiles. These were never used and will probably eventually become flotsam. A popular theory among some citizens of America, the country that constructed these kind of satellites, is that they contain scalar wave technology. Some evidence for this as well as its usage, derives from those seeking legal suit against the military and the state for secret projects involving the ongoing use of microwave frequency transmission from satellites for use in mind control. The more popular kind of satellites are those used in telecommunications by large international capitalist corporations such as television, telephone, and internet service providers. These carry all the frequencies of mainstream culture in the airwaves high above the heads of the secured and insulated masses, while outside the ridiculous garbage noise of our culture over the span of history since we first put satellites in space reaches out into the vacuum of the electromagnetic background radiation of the universe, screaming life on planet Earth to all our surrounding neighbors. When you surf the net, when you channel surf, when you turn the radio dial, you are traveling through frequencies broadcast by these beacons. There are also satellites sent up by the various space programs of the nations of the Earth for the purpose of conducting different types of research project and conveying various different types of survey. Some of these look down and monitor such things as the weather, tectonic continental pressures, pollution from 
population densities, and exotic ecosystems. Others are aimed outward and make measurements on such things as background radiation levels of the universe, a survey of galaxies, or like the Hubble Space Telescope, send back direct observational data from extraplanetary objects. Some are simply internally motivated, containing biological experiments to be recollected later, or measurement equipment for telling the difference between the time inside the satellite from the time at the launch site for coordination of the alignment of windows. Some are simply time capsules sent up by lucky classes of children. Others contain plutonium. The Space Shuttle is the vehicle used to deliver many of these satellites into space, while rockets are launched off containing others inside a breakaway shell. The Space Shuttle is an enormous airplane that is attached to a fuel tank and two jet boosters to propel it beyond Earth's atmosphere faster than the pull of gravity. After the shuttle is outside of the atmosphere, the fuel tank and thrusters break off and become space flotsam. The use of solid fuel rocket propulsion systems such as are used in the space shuttle boosters has been common practice since the German Blitzkrieg of England in the 1930s. There is also an international space station in orbit around the Earth. and There are astronauts living inside of it right now, at the very moment I am writing these words. This is merely the newer, collaborative replacement for the Russian space station Mir which had been in space at least 20 years before it was decommissioned. Currently, the astronauts that live on the station are competing to break one another's records for longest time spent in the microgravity conditions of outer space. A. The Global Communications System Perhaps the primary purpose for the satellite technology in orbit around the Earth is telecommunications. This is the goal to link all members of society to one another through mechanical media. Control of these media may themselves be able to fit in the palm of one's hand. However, they are becoming increasingly reliant on the satellite telecommunication system as people demand greater and greater coverage areas for their chosen connectivity to each other. This process is known as globalization, and this is a multicultural and societal pattern that is going on all over the world now. It is an agenda of the United Nations who encourage it to be taught in schools and that it incorporate equal rights for women and minorities. It is the cultural phenomenon of mediated press coverage of international events, more of which is offered with the more expensive services. B. The Pop Culture Simulacrum Meanwhile, the cultural phenomenon equivalent to this is the grossing of the classes of the masses into the aggregate mainstream. This attempts to appeal to people from all walks of life and to sell them further acculturations for their affectations. Its sum and substance is the pop culture simulacrum. In the 1930s, there was a disagreement between the Aryan Germans and the German Jews over the value of the human soul that led to the six million slaughtered Jews of the Holocaust. This led to the capitalist culture's Cold War with the Communist Soviet Union. The argument of both wars was the dollar as being a representative simulacrum or symbolic token exchange system of nothing greater than an addictive substance such as a drug. Nowadays many people have caught on to this idea and are forced to part with their foolish identification of themselves with their money. For the value of a person is not expressed by his or her worth to the economy. This does not mean that the same parties who promoted drugs and money as being relative have not continued to make their insinuations about the constitution of the soul of a person as being relative to some chemical substance or other. Because there is little difference between the value of the human soul to the economy and the puff of smoke from a cigarette. People still assert their personal desires on reality, few realizing what agendas they might be triggering the furtherance of, even fewer caring that these should benefit their fellow people. This is merely the pop culture simulacrum. It doesn't matter if you are real or not. You are only as important as a number, one out of an unknown amount. 
The system can be bent as much as it bends you, and to use it is like looking long into the face of the abyss, for it is looking just as long into you.